So it's winter in my corner of the world and that means a lot of cold and rainy days. And although we really love rainy days and we do spend a lot of time out splashing in puddles and things, it means more inside time with the kids. Now my kids love to sew. They've obviously watched it be a part of my everyday life and I've always let them be involved with whatever projects I'm doing. My daughter especially and one of her favorite things to do is to repair their stuffed animals, whether they need it or not. So I finally decided that I would put together her own little repair kit sewing box just for her. So she wouldn't have to keep asking me for it. She would be able to have her own setup. One day I put a picture of it up on Instagram and a lady asked for more details on what I chose to put into it and why. So here we are, a uh, what's in my child's first sewing box video. I've had this actual little box since I was a child myself. It spent most of its life holding sewing machine bobbins, but I thought it was just the right size and I liked that I could pass down a slightly sentimental box for this and know that it's something that she'll probably have forever. Inside I chose Guterman threads because they have nice vibrant colors and the spool size and shape allowed me to fit more in this little box. and. I liked how they lay on their sides so you can see the colors instead of up on their ends so that all you saw was a bunch of labels. Honestly though, she knows where I keep all of my threads and uh, usually comes here for color matching. But she does have some inside the box itself. I didn't want to put any actual scissors into the box because she has a little brother and I just know that having it accessible for repairs all the time would invite him to create things to repair and we would end up with a lot of toys with very serious issues. Um, I wanted her box to be something that she didn't need to ask me for and that could be available to her anytime she wanted. So in place of scissors, I included this little thread cutter. I have a bunch of them on ribbons for them to use when we're embroidering and things like that. So they really like them. Um, putting them on makes them feel very official in their tasks and they have independence and cutting power but it's hard to have accidents or be destructive with them. So I really like these for children a lot. The pin cushion I made especially to fit in a space next to the thread. I was going to use something fun as a base, like my salt shaker pin cushion, but I couldn't find anything with a low enough profile to still fit into the box. So I just made a simple one. I think it turned out pretty cute though. I like pin cushions. I think they add a lot of character to a sewing box. It's pretty simple. I did put a couple layers of cardboard in the bottom just to hold its shape and also to act as a pin guard when she was putting the pins in so they wouldn't go through. I didn't film a video about making this specific pin cushion, but I do have one showing how to make my needle cushion, uh, which is kind of fun. I used to just put my needles that I was sewing with in the paper in the top of the spool and thought that I could do better than that. So I made a little pin cushion that fits right into the spool top and uh, I don't know, it's kind of cute. I end up using it quite a lot. So, I don't know, maybe I'll make a, another video about how to make pincushions out of fun things like salt shakers and candlesticks and things like that, if that seems like a video anyone would want to see. Uh, what else? I used embroidery needles because the eyes are actually bigger in embroidery needles than they are in regular, just standard hand sewing needles. So they're easier for her to thread herself. And I do have pins and needles in here. I've always let my kids play with pins and needles for projects. Um, my mom let me play with hers when I was little. Toddlers love tactile project type tasks like open and closing latches and things like that and I found that they really like to take all the pins out of a pincushion and then put them all back. I've never had a problem with them injuring themselves on them or anything like that. They learn pretty quickly which end is the pokey end and then learn how to handle tools respectfully and not get hurt which I think is important to teach them really early on. It also gives them something to do to be involved in my sewing projects without grabbing whatever I'm actually sewing. So that's a plus as well. So anyway, yes, I do let my kids play with pin cushions and pins and needles when we're sewing. Uh, what else? So I do have a little thimble in here. I tried to show her how to use a metal thimble, but she just kind of avoided that finger and so it wasn't really doing anything for her. So my favorite thimbles are leather thimbles. They allow you to still have a little bit of feedback from your project. So I like leather thimbles and um, this is just one from Clover. They have one that's small enough that it actually does fit on a five-year-old's finger. She was a little wary at first but I put it on her finger and then said look this is what it's for. There's no pokies and uh, so she thought that was brilliant. So she does actually use it for what it's intended to be for. 
and um, she gets excited to use her little little magical device that stops pokes from happening. So yeah, that's that's all I put in here. I have my pincushion, pins and needles, a leather thimble, some nice little threads, and a thread cutter. And she's had it for about a month now, and um, doesn't seem to be really missing anything. I'm sure it'll change over time as she grows and as her projects grow. But for now, as a little starter kit for my five-year-old daughter, this has worked really well. So yeah, my, my little girl is officially part of the sewing world, and uh, I hope you enjoyed taking this little tour of what I chose to put into it and why. So thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any other questions about it or why I chose what I did. If you've ever made a child's first sewing box, I would love to hear about it. You can leave me a comment below or even give me a picture and tag me on Instagram if you'd like. Or if you remember your own first sewing box, I'd love to hear about that as well. Sewing boxes are so individual and personal and special, and it's always interesting to see what people use and what they don't in their own personal sewing boxes. And I love seeing how everybody customizes their own to meet their own needs. And so with that, I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs> it's wet. It's too wet. How are you this morning? Yep. Oh. What? <laughs> you put that back. No. Yeah.